My name is Marianne Verstappen. I'm an artist. So there's the story by J.R.R. Tolkien that I read about, I don't know, 15 years ago. And you know when you've like, I don't know, when you read something and then or you see a movie a long time ago and maybe you forget the ending, but it still, you know, it still has meaning for you. Or, you know, or you think about it enough that perhaps you make your own meaning for it. Um, anyway, this the story's a bit like that because I don't know I don't know what what like what the message he intended to have out of it, but this is the story that I retell myself. Um, and it's the story of the story is about this painter who um, you know who's just deeply into his work, and um, every day he gets up and he paints the whole day, and he just he's just trying to paint this perfect tree. But the problem is it keeps getting bigger. And um, and so he keeps having to stitch more canvas onto his canvas and he's trying to paint it and paint it. And, you know, he's like, every time he thinks it's finished, he steps back and takes it all in. And then he realizes he could add a little bit more over here and a little bit more over there. And he paints and paints and paints. And um, this painter has to go on a journey. And so part of the reason, and he doesn't want to go on the journey because he doesn't want to leave his painting. And so part of the reason why the painting is never finished is because secretly he knows that he doesn't want to go on this journey. So he's, but as long as he, as long as his painting's never finished, he doesn't have to think about it. Um, but he's got to go do this job. So eventually, um, the people that need him to go and do this job, which is to dig ditches, like come and get him, and are like, hey, you're done now. I'm sorry, but you've got to, you've got to come with us. Um, so he goes and he leaves his painting, and he's devastated because he knows that no one else really values his work that much and they'll probably just use it to fix the roof or something like that but he goes to you know to dig his ditches and um and he realizes that he loves it and you know because you know he digs all day and then it's done and he can go and rest and painting didn't feel like that for him um so he he, he forgets about his painting and he you know spends his day digging for the love of it um and you know, for the sense that it's it's finished at the end of the day, and um, and in the meantime, his someone doesn't unfortunately indeed repair their roof with his painting, but a little scrap of it really catches someone's eye, and it's this one leaf that's just just perfect. It's got perfect symmetry. It's just it's got the right amount of shading, and so they keep it and they hang it on their wall. And then one day when this painter finishes his journey, he goes into his neighbor's house and sees this leaf on the wall and, and it looks familiar to him. And he says, where did you find this leaf? And this neighbor says, oh, it was from this painter that lived next door and, you know, had this painting that he couldn't finish. And, and, and I just thought it was beautiful. And so I hung it here and the painter realizes, of course he realizes who he's talking about. And so he, um, he realizes he can paint again and he goes back to his work. But he approaches it more like digging dishes and, you know, he works on it until the end of the day. And then he steps back and lets his mind rest. And he finds that when he can let things go, his painting's a bit better and he can move on a bit faster. And that's what I learned from that story I read. That's what I remember about it.